guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so, clearly I talk enough to make the videos last up to 10 minutes, so I probably get these things on a more daily basis than I thought. But I don't mind it because it's, it's actually a lot of fun to do this and it feels, again, more natural to me to talk in this fashion instead of doing it at the computers. Today I will be talking about A Man Called Ove by Frederick Beckman. I just finished this early this morning. So if you do not know, this is about a man called Ove. <laughs> but at first sight, he seems like he's this really grumpy man. But when his new neighbors back up into his mailbox, his not only are his plans ruined, but he gets a chance to, I don't know, become part of the living world again which he seemed to have been hiding from. I absolutely loved this book. I really loved this book so, so much. I don't know what it is about the grumpy old men who have more to say are just people who are, they seem like they're just these mean people, but then you find out that they're really not. But I love that kind of, kind of people and Ove is just so funny with his peculiar and particular ways and I just absolutely loved him as a person. I loved the neighbors and all the people that he knows apart from this neighborhood and just like peeling the layers from of this man's surface was just so interesting and fascinating to just to see like how he's really not just a grumpy old man who has to have everything in a particular fashion. He, you know, he's just so much more than that. And I really loved how Bagman was able to do that through flashbacks to his earlier and younger lives. I had a hard time figuring out how this was reading to me because it was a little bit confusing to me how my mind like how I was supposed to describe it but I realized that it kind of reads in a very episodic fashion so you have like this cheesy ending to a section or a chapter and then you have these flashbacks to that and although it's almost it's almost cheesy it's almost a little bit too on the too much side I absolutely loved that aspect of it I love the fact that you know we see him in the present and then it ends to a point where he kind of flashes back to those moments in his life and I just absolutely enjoyed this book so much. I love the writing in which it, it was superbly written and I can't believe this is actually his debut novel. It feels like he's been writing for ages and it just does not read like a debut novel at all. I love this book so much that it's just a little bit too hard to talk about. The writing is superb. The story is so well developed and well written and told in a way that you absolutely love the characters and Ove especially and my heart was just bursting. It's a humorous book but it has such depth and feel to it that I think that anybody could love this. So I highly recommend this. It's, it's worth the money and time spent on this. I definitely will be buying this in the near future because I absolutely love this as I've already said. Now I am currently working on HHHH by Laurent Bennett. This has actually been translated from French by Sam Taylor. I'm about 30 pages in right now and there's this one part, let me get to it, where I feel like it, where what he says actually tells you the reason for why it's written away. There is nothing more artificial in a historical narrative than this kind of dialogue. Reconstructed from more or less first-hand accounts with the idea of breathing life into the dead pages of history. In stylistic terms, this process has certain similarities with hypotyposis, which means making a scene so lifelike that it gives the reader the impression he can see it with his own eyes. When a writer tries to bring a conversation back to life in this way, the result is often contrived, and the effect is the opposite of that desired. You see too clearly the strings controlling the puppets. You hear too distinctly the author's voice in the mouth of the historical figures. It's really interesting that he said that because 
when I started reading this, I was a little bit disappointed in how he was writing this story because I expected to have like an actual narrative going on and that it was going to read more fictionalized. And then when she said that, I was like, oh, okay, so that's why he's writing it in this way. So it's definitely non-fiction and the fact that the author is literally telling you the story in a, his own fashion. He talks about the writing process. He's talking about the writing process that he's going through and also and starting to kind of lay the foundations of the story as he goes along. And it's really interesting because he like talks about all these different films and books that have been written about Heydrich, I think this is pronounced his name, and how everybody has this different way of portraying him, but they're not always that accurate. And so that's kind of like what he's um, struggling with when he's trying to write this is how to be accurate, not to be, not to overdo it, like Victor Hugo, as he talks about in the book. And I just really find this so interesting because he's not only talking about, you know, Heydrich and and then going through the process of talking about the resistance against everything, but he's also talking about the process of writing this and how he was struggling to get it just the right way that he wanted it to be, you know. So I absolutely am enjoying this. Again, I'm 30 pages in and I will be checking in later on when I have read a little bit more of this. They are still working on the roof. I'm I sure you could hear what they're uh, doing right now. I think you can probably hear their noise. I don't know when they're going to be done. I'm hoping that they'll be done today, but I have a feeling that they're not going to be. But that being said, I have work to go to sometime today, and then we, my brother and I will be going to a store because he needs to finish Christmas shopping. So before, I will check you a little bit later. Ciao. Hey guys, I'm back for an update. I sell an egg salad sandwich for lunch. I'm really hungry. And I have gotten to 75, I think, pages in. I'm really enjoying this book more than I was thinking I was going to when I first started it, just because I wasn't expecting this type of style. But anyway, it's really interesting seeing how he looks at the process of writing this out. It's more of like him just journaling, in a way, his, his not only what happened, to these people um what was happening at this time uh and during at the beginning of World war ii and so on but also his experience of writing it and trying to find the right way to do it so it's really interesting to see the process and i'm looking forward to reading some more but i don't know if i'll actually get any further with this today because after this i have to go to work and i'll be shopping going out for shopping wise and stuff like that so we'll see and i'll update you some more about my day later on this is one of the ornaments that we got at the ornament store and this one the other one that we got at the ornament store this is the tree you ready to go for a walk? Ready to go for a walk? Yeah? Okay. So, <clears throat> I actually forgot to say goodnight yeah, last night and update you on things. And so, we went to Best Buy here last night after I went to work. And we actually found something that I think that I really liked for my mom for Christmas. And then um, got some dinner and came home. I was actually planning to watch the Chamber of Secrets, Harry, the second book, the second film in the Harry Potter series. And that didn't happen. I actually just ended up continuing on with NCIS last night. And so, yeah. That's about it. I didn't actually get any chance, any chance to actually read again. So that's just about it. I'll say goodnight 
for yesterday and put it all together and edit it and then start later. Today's vlog. So thank you all so much for watching today's video and I will see you next time.